Move to the general business agenda, item 11, which is the proposed fiscal year 2014-2015 budget and fiscal year 2015-2020 capital improvement plan. And I'll turn it over to our city manager for the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening again, Mayor Bell, Mayor Pro Tem Cora Cole McFadden, members of the city council, city staff, and residents of Durham, uh, both present here tonight or viewing on a Durham television network. It continues to be my honor to be entrusted to lead this great organization and over 2,400 employees committed to service within the organization and throughout the community. I am pleased to be before you this evening to officially present the proposed budget for the City of Durham for the 2014-2015 fiscal year. Over the last few years, Durham residents told us we're a city moving in the right direction. And according to the latest resident satisfaction survey, we still are. In fact, some might say we're preparing to move at the speed of light. City Council recently approved agreements for the city to work closely with two major fiber network providers to bring ultra-fast broadband to Durham. So what does ultra-fast broadband service mean? According to one of the providers, with an ultra-fast fiber-based network, information can be downloaded or shared 10 times faster than what is available to most residents in Durham now. Put another way, you can download 25 songs in one second, your favorite TV show in less than three seconds, and an online movie in 36 seconds. The impact of this latest technology is obvious for residents and businesses, and more so for the long-term economic development and investment in Durham. It quite simply lays the foundation for our community to keep mov moving forward with increased connectivity, cooperation, collaboration, innovation, and inclusion, all of which are valuable characteristics for developing a budget that meets Durham's residents' needs and continues to move our great city forward. No matter the provider, each has a strategic focus aimed at providing a superior product that leads to satisfied customers. Not much different from Durham's own strategic goals that support our effort of making a city that's a great place to live, work, and play. That's why Durham's strategic plan goals continue to play a major role in driving the budget process for the city. These goals are supported by programs and services measured to ensure that resources are used effectively with budget decisions based on reliable data that show whether programs are meeting the needs of our residents. The continued prioritization of programs aligned with strategic plan goals demanded that budget priorities and new programs clearly support improving the city's economy, community, neighborhoods, management, or its infrastructure. For the past few months, the city has worked closely with the fiber providers, learning their needs and what is required from the city to move gigabit broadband service from an idea to reality. Installing thousands of miles of fiber throughout the city is a huge construction project, and as you might imagine, it's not a simple task that should be undertaken without a lot of advanced planning. Planning that included the city sharing volumes of information about existing infrastructure and processes, all to get ready for construction when the hard work begins. And we know the work can be inconvenient, but it is worth it in the end. We learned that preparing for ultra high speed internet could be quite similar to the steps the city takes to prepare our annual budget. One provider called it their fiber ready checklist, which includes providing information about the city's existing infrastructure, helping to ensure access to existing infrastructure, and making the construction process speedy and predictable. We'll refer to our preparation as our budget ready checklist which includes gathering information. In other words, what are our revenues and costs and how do they support residents' needs and desires? Creating and sustaining and facilitating partnerships and implementing high quality services and programs. In the past years, we listened to elected officials and residents in many different ways as we prepared the budget, as in the past years. I do would like to take this opportunity to thank the mayor and the city council for their guidance and participation from the very beginning of the budget process and the residents who made their voices heard as well. Each budget continues to be a collaborative process that cannot be done well without the input of the council and the public. 
With any major project, you must know what your resources are and understand what factors influence them short and long term. In working with the fiber providers, we provided them with information about our infrastructure and processes. So our budget checklist item number one, gather information. What are our revenues and costs and how do they support residents' needs and desires? As always in developing our budget, we look at our overall resources, financial and human, to understand available resources needed to sustain a well-managed city, including the cost of services, adequate resources to provide them, including fair and reasonable tax rates along with re responsible debt ratios, bond ratings, and reserves. We also look at the potential impact of the state legislative decisions on our budget. The proposed total budget for fiscal year 2014-15 is $386.7 million, an increase of $10.2 million or 2.7% from last year. The proposed general fund budget, which covers most of the city's core services, is $173.6 million, a 2.3% increase from last year. This budget represents slight increases in property and sales tax revenues and decreases in business license revenues, inspection and planning fees due to the completion of several large commercial projects. This year I am recommending an increase of 1.29 cents in the tax rate to 58.04 cent per $100 of assessed value. The owner of a $150,000 home would pay a total of $870.60 an increase of $19.35 per year. This includes a .73 cent increase per $100 of assessed value for voter approved debt service costs and a .56 cent in the general fund to pay for pay and benefits for 16 police officers and 15 firefighters whose salaries had been covered by grants that recently expired. The table shows how the property tax will be allocated to cover property tax supported city expenses. Overall sales tax and state collected revenues are expected to increase by almost $1.8 million, or a little over 3%. It will be important to closely monitor these revenue sources throughout the year as a result of the changes brought about by the tax reform legislation approved by the General Assembly last year. Proposed general fund expenditures include increases in personnel and transfers and a decrease in operating expenditures. The economy continues to rebound, but slowly. As a result, we continue to scrutinize programs and services and limit any increases to what is needed to accommodate population growth and other cost factors, and also to support our strategic plan. This year, departments also eliminated about $1.6 million from their budgets to help close the gap between projected revenues and expenditures. The proposed budget continues to meet our general fund balance reserve policies, and that is projected to be at 13.5%. The proposed budget also uses $440,000 of fund balance for one-time expenditures. The city continues to enjoy an outstanding credit rating by all rating agencies. The debt ratio in the budget this year is projected to be 14.66%, which is below the budget guideline of 15%. Our commitment to being a well-managed city includes rewarding employees who are committed to excellence, creativity, and service. According to the most recent resident satisfaction survey, eight in 10 residents say our employees are courteous and easy to contact. I am pleased to announce that after several years, we are recommending the city to return to a differentiated pay for performance system. Rewarding employees who perform at a high level is a top priority. Employees will receive an average 3% pay increase, while police and fire pay plans will continue at an average of 3.5% pay increase. We're also happy to say that we don't project a change in health insurance due to great performance by the city's self-insured health plan, including employee wellness initiatives. A moderate 5% increase is projected in our, our self-insured dental insurance program in the proposed budget. Budget checklist item number two, create, sustain, and facilitate partnerships that benefit Durham residents. Over the past few months, we've learned a lot of new terms as we've prepared for the possibility of entering the gigabit world. Terms like fiber hut, quite literally little huts that house the fiber connections that can reach out to as many as 20,000 homes. 
When I think of the role of government, this checklist item reminds me of our charge to initiate and facilitate partnerships that help us achieve many of our strategic goals. At the same time, we strive to reach out to distressed communities and areas to ensure that everyone, no matter where they live, work, or play, can be a part of our community's success. We continue our strong collaborations throughout the community to continue to stabilize and grow the economy, partnering with the Durham Chamber, our great universities, Durham County, Durham Public Schools, and Downtown Durham Incorporated. The city will continue to provide resources that help businesses create jobs, recruit and retain employees, and even help businesses get their footing. Earlier this year, city and county managers embarked on an initiative to develop a joint strategic economic development plan. While the level of community interest in this joint strategic plan has been high, only some progress has been made to date. While there is no immediate budgetary impact, to propel the Durham economy forward, it is essential that the elected leadership of the city and the county and city and county management make completing and approving a joint economic strategic plan by the end of the calendar year a high priority. The city will also continue its partnership with Durham County to fund programs that benefit both county and city residents. Here's a list of the many joint initiatives that serve our community. At this time, I'd like to extend a special welcome to new county manager Wendell Davis. I, along with city staff, look forward to working with him and to continuing our strong partnership with Durham County. You need only drive downtown to see uh, evidence of growth and revitalization in the community. Business improvement grants are proposed to continue for the Paris Street and 9th Street areas to support this revitalization. And last year, Durham stepped up its already cool art scene. After a year of planning, the Art of Cool Jazz Festival burst onto the scene, attracting thousands and injecting nearly a half a million dollars into our economy over one weekend. The first annual Bull City Sculpture Show began earlier this month and will bring thousands to Durham over the next six months. Installed throughout downtown, it includes 12 new works by artists from all over the country, six of them from North Carolina. It's possible in part through a $10,000 grant from the Office of Economic and Workforce Development and a contribution from the Durham Cultural Advisory Board. Supporting the arts is essential to Durham's economy and I recommend that we continue our funding of the arts as shown. Now turning to neighborhoods, which in a way serve to connect us all to our community and to our city. Neighborhoods are our home base and our goal is to make each one thriving and livable. The city is working to support and achieve Mayor Bell's challenge of reducing poverty one neighborhood at a time. During next week's budget presentations, department directors will highlight programs that support reducing poverty in Durham's neighborhoods, in particular Census Tract 10.01. To that end, the city continues to take a holistic approach to helping Durham's most distressed neighborhoods. The Penny for Housing will continue to address many affordable housing needs. If you've driven by Southside lately, you know how much a difference a year makes. 132 rental units are nearing completion and 19 of the 48 available lots for single family homes have already been reserved. Planning for phase two rental and home ownership is also underway. While other efforts also ramp up this year that sharpen our focus on creating thriving neighborhoods, I'm excited that the city with the support from a $96,000 grant from HUD will conduct an extensive fair housing training and outreach this year to the Latino community. We've talked about vacant and boarded houses for many years now, and we've made progress toward bringing those, many of those unsafe and deteriorating properties up to code. We found 502 of those properties in 2011, and we're projecting that number, which is now at 150, to be only about 75 by the end of next fiscal year. Code enforcement will continue through the proactive rental inspection program and we need lot cleanup efforts. Many residents attended events aimed at encouraging healthy living and just getting to know your neighbor, including Thanksgiving and spring and both cities play streets, will continue to support efforts like these. Working with our partner Triangle Transit Authority to improve our transit system to meet resident expectation continues to be a priority. Funding from the new half cent sales tax increase and a $7 motor vehicle registration fee began in 2013 and has helped increase frequency as well as alleviate overcrowded routes. 
Improvements to bus stops, facilities, and security are planned for the coming year. Solid Waste Collection is a service that consistently maintains high rankings in resident satisfaction. Despite that, it's an area in which revenues don't support the service to our more than 80,000 households. Last year, in a move to more clearly define solid waste costs and to adequately fund capital needs, such as heavy equipment and collection trucks, the Solid Waste Fund was created, and a capital recovery fee of $1.80 per month began. Despite these changes, the Solid Waste Fund this year will require a general fund subsidy of more than $9.6 million. Although additional fee increases to shore up some of the operating costs were necessary, as shown on the slide, other operational efficiencies were also needed. I'm proposing a reduction in code enforcement and that it be done on a reactive basis when residents inform us of a need, enabling the department to eliminate two positions. Also, while waste reduction continues to be an important effort to encourage recycling and waste diversion, this activity will be absorbed by other positions within the department. Rest assured, we remain committed to providing a high quality of solid waste services to our residents despite these necessary reductions. Nowhere in the city are partnerships more vital than our work to keep our community safe and secure. As warranted, this area uses the greatest share of city resources and personnel as well as facilities and equipment. Reducing crime remains a high priority for our city, and while we recognize that crime rates do fluctuate from quarter to quarter and year, year to year, no number of homicides, assaults, and other violent crimes is acceptable. All sworn positions are fully funded in the police and fire departments, including previously granted grant-funded positions, as shown on the slide, and vital life-saving equipment is also funded for both departments. As pointed out last year, Durham's underfunded criminal justice system continues to burden city resources, next year by over $250,000. And while supporting these efforts is crucial for our community at this time, it forces the city to reprioritize resources to subsidize the state criminal justice system in Durham with funds that could be used for other local crime fighting needs. This budget provides funding to support a domestic violence judge, witness victim legal assistance, and a gang assistant district attorney. We also continue, will continue our partnership with Durham County to help redirect youth from gangs. Budget checklist item number three, implement programs and services that are efficient, effective, and high quality. This checklist item is where reality sets in. We're putting our programs and services into action to make a difference in the lives of Durham's residents. In addition to programs, taking care of the infrastructure of the city is crucial for our future. For that reason, we continue to keep maintenance at the top of our priority list. The city has made significant strides to commit funding over the past few years to address long-standing infrastructure maintenance deficiencies. The proposed budget does not include any additional funds for parks and recreation facilities maintenance. However, during the budget workshops next week, staff will present a plan to enhance maintenance quality, which if approved would require an additional half cent tax increase above what is recommended in the proposed budget. City Council has already considered the rate increases for water and sewer fund with an average of 3% rate increase that will generate about $1.4 million for ongoing maintenance of water lines and other infrastructure. Also to, to continue meeting stringent environmental challenges for Jordan and Falls Lakes, stormwater rates will need to increase about 7.5% for customers. While we've come a long way over the past few years, the conditions of our streets continues to be a concern for our residents. According to our most recent res uh, resident satisfaction survey, I'm proposing that in addition to $400,000 for sidewalks, the street repaving funding be increased this year to $1 million in the proposed budget. A new position is also proposed to be funded in the Public Works Department to support street sidewalk and bike lane uh, project enhancement uh, project delivery. Capital improvement project funds are also budgeted for much needed parks improvements, including ADA upgrades, field, and court repairs. You'll see some of the other major capital improvement projects listed here totaling more than $93 million for current and new projects. These projects are funded through fees, water and sewer revenues, revenue bonds, and other financing. In our effort to improve transparency, funds are, are proposed budgeted for an upgraded Web 2.0 
that improves two-way communications with residents, including mobile apps and social networking. We're also excited about a joint city-county open data project to foster open, transparent, and accessible government by sharing data freely. At this point, we've done our best thinking to deliver a budget that propels the city forward. It has been a collaborative process, assessing resources, trying to predict, relying on data and past experiences, what the immediate future holds, relying at all times, while at all times considering the long-range implications of budget decisions. I'm confident that this budget has all the benefits that being a gigabit fiber community offers. It's collaborative, it's forward thinking, it's inclusive, it's strategic, it's innovative, affordable, and most importantly, meets the needs of a city that is headed in the right direction. And now, some might say, even at the speed of light. It's a little wonder there's great excitement and anticipation about fiber coming to Durham. Just as with fiber possibilities, your thoughts about the 2015 budget are important. And while you might not be able to send your suggestions and comments at the speed of light, you can get them to City Hall by email, on the city's Facebook page or Twitter feed, and even by video submission on the city's YouTube channel. So here's your chance to tell us what you think. Then we'll respond to your comments and answer any questions as we can during our second annual E-Town Hall event on Monday, June 2nd, which will be aired live on Durham Television Network and live streamed on the city's website. In addition to our E-Town Hall event, there are other ways that you can let us know your thoughts about the budget. Copies of the preliminary budget are available on the city's website, in the city clerk's office, and in the management, uh, budget and management services department. As always, special recognition and thanks go out to the budget and management services director, Bertha Johnson, and her entire budget staff, as they provide superior leadership to ensure that our strategic plan guides as well as aligns with the city's budget priorities. Thank you, Bertha. I continue to appreciate and value the close working relationship between the mayor, City Council and City Administration, and say that now that our preliminary checklist is done, let's work together on the proposed budget to get up to speed. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Um, as usual, you've done a great job of setting us on the path, as you indicated, uh, we really start to work on Wednesday, May 28th, when we begin to sit down and go through the proposed budget uh, and try to shape a budget that hopefully we can all be comfortable with.